100% of the proceeds from this channel is going to the struggling families in the Philippines. I am currently in collaboration with friends and family in the Philippines in creating two new YouTube channels as a second source of income during hard times or during off season. Life is busy so I try to focus on my goals but this little boy, he derailed my plans. Something about his eyes, it was so sad, it, it grabbed me. I asked my friend about this little boy and he said he sells freshwater clams door to door. He always feels bad when little kids have to work to earn money for the family. He would see these kids, uh, him and his little sister and another kid, collecting these freshwater clams in the rice fields when they should be in school. So this little boy will come to my friend's house almost every day to sell these freshwater clams and my friend doesn't have that much money but if he could afford he buys these clams and give the little boy a little extra. But my friend also doesn't have enough money. I mean he has a difficult time finding work and he has a family to support. So not all the time he can buy these clams. I was distressed so I wired extra money to him and asked him to buy snacks or some groceries that this little boy could take with him each time he comes to my friend's house. So my friend did, but the next few days the boy didn't show up, which is unusual because he would show up almost every day. I was getting concerned, my friend was getting concerned, so by the third day my friend went out to look for him. And one of the good things about living in a small village or small villages is that everybody knows everybody. So he went around asking if anybody knew about that little boy who sold uh, freshwater clams door to door, which led him to the next village over and he was able to find the little boy. And I guess through the last couple days uh, and through my obsession, uh, my friend felt a connection with this little boy. So when he went to the kid's house, he was a little distressed and what he saw the house was a rundown shack and uh, my friend went to talk to the mother to let the mother know that the little boy has a ninong which means godfather in Hawaii that wants to help him so he took over the groceries that he bought and the mother graciously accepted it but I was it didn't he's he sent pictures of where this little boy lived and it it, it didn't make me feel any better and I knew I knew that I couldn't afford to extend that much more resources to somebody I don't really know but I already know myself I wouldn't be able to sleep knowing this, that this little boy working to help earn money for his family is living in the way that he's living but apparently he's the oldest of four children his mother was widowed uh, with three other children and the father who uh, sells charcoal which you can imagine doesn't make that much money is help supporting all seven of these children and his wife and himself so they were in dire straits they actually had a job on this land that they're living for this people that used to pay them to care for the land but these people was accepted to immigration to the United States so the people left this family on the land with no source of income and is focused on their life and well struggling and making their way in the United States and you know even though United States used to be and probably is the land of opportunity it's still difficult to find work to survive to afford rent in the United States so I'm sure the migrant family who left these uh, people on their land are struggling and can't help them meanwhile these people are left trying to get by and they just get by I had to think long and hard because I know I had to get back on track with my plans because the plan was to make two additional YouTube channels for families who are struggling in the Philippines so it will help their livelihood. There will be another stream of income that will help them during their hard times. But now I can't get this little boy out of my mind so I had to help them. I asked my friend to buy roasted chicken and to um, take it to the family and to talk to them and just find out a little bit more about their life. And that's how I found out about uh, they used to be um, managers of this land before the family who owned the land migrated to the United States. There's one thing I noticed about the Philippines. Everybody has a hard luck story. Everybody has a hard life. Everybody struggles. Some people are in crisis. 
and most of the time these stories are true. But sometimes I think some people, because they're poor, feel entitled to embellish their hardship to get whatever they can out of whoever they can. In this case, this little boy asked for nothing. This family asked for nothing. I saw this little boy working hard to earn money for his family and I wanted to gift him groceries. And when I delivered these groceries, he didn't ask for anything. His mother didn't ask for anything. They graciously accepted the groceries that I had given to them with respect. It was I who had a difficulty accepting the way they were struggling and it was I that made the decision to intervene. The problem is they don't own the land. If the family who left this land were OFWs, uh, offshore Filipino workers, they would return. But the family migrated to another country and they may not return. If so, these people can live on the land indefinitely. But if I make improvements to this land illegally and the migrant family doesn't return, the family or even distant relatives can sue to get that land and take everything away. So this is the problem I was faced with. I don't want this little boy and his family living in this little shack, but I just can't build anything. I wanted to put down a concrete floor, but I was advised by my friend that I couldn't. He suggested that we fix the walls of the house and the roof of the house. So that's what I agreed to. In my mind, I made a promise to myself to help this boy and by extension his family and I'm going to hold myself to my word. I asked my friend if he could ask the little boy's father if he could help him repair the walls and roof to this house. The father, teary-eyed, accepted. I was worried about the timeline because there are other things that I needed to do. There are other goals that I mentioned before, but I was surprised by the the generosity of others. One of my friend's friends found out that he was going to help repair a house and he volunteered to help. Then one of the neighbors to my friend asked where were they going and then he joined to help. When I was in the Philippines around 2010-2011, I met this other man who helped me with another project with building goat houses and chicken houses for needy families who needed assistance. I got in contact with him. He was busy, but he agreed to help on his day off. The daily wage in the Philippines to work a full day is 400 pesos, which comes out to be about eight US dollars. So I told my friend to pay whoever helps build the house 400 pesos. And it's also traditional to cook lunch for everybody. I think they cook tinola, which is uh, chicken soup with rice. When they arrived at the little boy's house, the children began to cry because they thought it was a demolition team coming to tear down their house, forcing them to move someplace else. I can only assume that this situation occurred before. But once my friend explained to the children that they're there to fix the house, uh, the children relaxed. And also I asked my friend to bring more chicken and that chicken disappeared within 60 seconds. The neighbors of the little boy also came out to help tear down, clean up and fix the house. This house was torn down and put up within two days because of all the shutdowns because of the pandemic. It was very difficult getting building supplies and those businesses who still had building supplies, the prices were very expensive. Hopefully the prices of building supplies and other things will come down after the pandemic and all those lockdowns, but I couldn't wait until then. I needed to get this out of the way and then just uh, occasionally uh, send and, uh, the little boy groceries maybe once a week I had other responsibilities that I needed to attend to both in Hawaii where I live and in the Philippines where I will live in the future I would periodically get updates throughout the day on how the project was going and I would see these little kids running in and out of the construction site so I asked how was the little boy where is he and they said that he was playing with his friends which is great because that's what little kids should be doing they should be playing with their friends and being kids and not responsible to contribute to the household income I'm not faulting the parents or judging the parents in any way. I can see how desperate they live. In fact, the first day that my friend went to visit the little boy's house, he filmed inside and I noticed that they needed a few things. Uh, 
I noticed that they needed a lot of things. So I asked them to buy them clothes hampers, a rice barrel to keep their rice dry in case of flooding, and some groceries. So the next day when he went back to ask the father if he could help rebuild the house or reinforce the walls and redo the roof, my friend noticed that they had the rice and the groceries hidden under their pillows where they sleep and I could see how they would think that even the littlest things is valuable. I grew up poor but not third world poor. I was born and raised on the island of Hawaii and Hawaii had become the 50th state of the United States in 1959. I was born in the 1960s and I was lucky for all the opportunities that I was given being born in the United States. At the time and probably still now the biggest uh, contributor to Hawaii's economy was the US military and then second tourism so I always had an opportunity to work and advanced myself and I was able to go to college and then get a good job in the island of Oahu in the city of Honolulu. When I went home to visit my grandmother who raised me, I noticed that she had cases of food in my room and I was looking through it, a lot of it was expired so I started throwing it away and my grandmother was upset and began to cry and she says, you know, the worst thing in the world is not being able to feed your children and I said, Grandma, your children have grandchildren right now so it's fine, they can take care of themselves but I could obviously see how upset she was so I went out and bought some more cases of food and replaced them them in my room to make her feel better. I don't ever remember starving. I was lucky that my grandparents made sure that I had everything I needed. I never had to worry about working or contributing to the family's income, but I can just imagine what my grandparents must have lived through before Hawaii became a state. The first time I visited the Philippines, I was shocked on how really poor people can be. My friend said that some people wake up in the morning without any food in the house, without any money in their wallets, and they have to go and look for food. I think the logo in the Philippines, if you don't work, you don't eat. But then the biggest problem there is that a lot of people want to work, except that there's no work available for them to do. And whatever work they have, there's so much competition for it that the wages are very low. If you get a job in the Philippines, like say working at a fast food restaurant, you have to pay two weeks worth of your training and then you have to buy your uniform and then you can buy that against your future salary but that's how much everything is stacked up against them. Furthermore, I was told it was Filipino law that if you worked at a job for more than six months then you're supposed to get benefits like sick pay, vacation and other things. So what businesses do to get around it, they hire people on six month contracts and then if they renew it then you were fired and then rehired. When I was there, there was this woman working at this internationally well-known restaurant for over 11 years on six month to six month contract and was never a full employee where she would ever get benefits. I helped a kid get a job at one of the popular Filipino national chain restaurants and he had to pay for his training for two weeks. He had to pay for his uniform against his future wages then after six months he had to reapply for a job but then the only job he was allowed to apply for was another job where he had to go through another two weeks of training and had to buy another set of uniforms so whatever little money they get they are gouged for almost anything that the businesses can get away with 10 15 years ago when i first started visiting the philippines i had all these ideas of how i could help people and I was confident that I could but now that I'm older I realize that this problem is way bigger than anyone could handle. I mean even the Philippines government couldn't handle the heck. The United States government is such a mess they won't be able to handle this. And now the Philippines has turned to China for help and that's playing with a snake that's eventually going to bite you. The good thing about President Duterte, the people really love him and the reason why he actually does make the Philippines safer. When I was visiting 10-15 um, years ago, I was told never to go to this barangay, which is where this boy lives, which is right next to the barangay I was staying at. I was told never to walk to this barangay because it was unsafe with all the drug use. And then when I heard that uh, President Duterte got into office and I heard 
all of the bad press about him, I contacted the friends and family in the Philippines and asked how they were doing and they said they liked it because the Philippines is safer now. One of the biggest problems I'm going to have to work through is for me to try not to help everyone I see. I am old enough to know that I cannot save the world. I have to get it through my head to stop trying. I only can help a very small amount of people. My money and my resources are very limited. This is the main argument that stops me from wanting to retire in the Philippines. Of course, the cost of living is way cheaper and my US dollar will go way further but it's not going to do any good if I'm going to be spending all that money trying to help everybody else. If you decide to move to the Philippines it's best that you visit several times and get used to and see if you can tolerate the extreme poverty that you're going to see and the begging that you're going to experience and see if this is actually a place where you can live. There's actually places in the Philippines for retirement that you're fairly shielded from all the realities of this country. My dream is to live in a tropical environment like Hawaii in a big piece of land with a lot of fruit trees and chickens and animals and family around me. And I can afford that and keep my house in Hawaii if I can just learn to live with the extreme poverty that will exist and continue to exist around me. Poverty is probably the number one obstacle for me moving to the Philippines. Well, actually, it's not poverty. It's my reaction to it. When I see people struggling, I just want to help. But I'm just going to have to figure out how to live with it. Um, if you are going to live in the Philippines, you're going to have to be able to live with all the poverty around you. And that's going to be the hardest thing for me. But you know, as ugly as this world is, there is still a lot of beauty in this world. You just have to recognize it. I mean, look at this. This boy who struggles and works hard to help earn money for his family. And look at my friend. His friends willingly came to help when they found out what he was gonna do. And then the neighbors of the little boy's dad all came over to help once they figured out what we we're doing. I noticed that the poorest people seem to be the most generous. It feels good to help someone, especially someone in need. Many times people aren't able to help, but that shouldn't be mistaken for not wanting to help. This house represents the beauty of this world. A whole bunch of people, strangers, came together and worked hard to help someone in need. It's not the house that I wish I could have built them, but it's far better than the shack that they were living in. I mean, this house is very nice. This is perfect for tropical weather, and it gives them a decent amount of privacy and hopefully security and pride and some place that they could come home to and just recoup from the hard day. This world is beautiful. You're just going to have to recognize it. And yes, I'm going to ignore the humongous bonfire next to this grass shack we just built. 100% of the proceeds from this channel is going to the struggling families in the Philippines.